Hey guys, it's May May, and if you saw my live video on Monday, you'll know that I'm planning on doing several acetate themed projects this week. The first one is a super easy card that's going to give you the look of much harder work without it being hard. This is the acetate I use. I get lots of questions. It's a 3M dual purpose transparency film. Now it's not the super clear kind. It is a transparency film, but you can see that it's pretty clear, right? I got this for free from my aunt. She gave me this whole box and so I haven't purchased any. So if you find it, this is what I'm using. But you can certainly buy, you know, acetate in lots of different styles and um, kinds and things nowadays because it's a pretty popular material. So the first thing I've done is I've cut a piece of acetate four and a quarter by five and seven sixteenths. That's just a slight bit shorter than, it's actually a sixteenth of an inch shorter than five and a half inches. You'll see why when we get to putting it together. So there's our first piece. The second piece I cut is a card base, basically, that is four and a quarter by six and a half. And we're gonna do some scoring real quick. And the first scoring we wanna do is on this piece, and we're gonna score it at um, half an inch, just like you saw in the card we did on Monday. Oh, we still need this, because we're gonna also, because we're making this an easel card, the acetate's gonna be the easel, kind of be clear for us. We need to score this one in half. So this one we're gonna score at two and three quarters. Now acetate can move on you when you score it, so you want to make sure that you're getting in there real good and you're doing it kind of easy. I'm actually going to use this bone folder to get between that line, just like this, and make it a nice crisp score. And see how many times I'm going over, but I'm not pressing as hard as you might think. I'm just doing a nice clean score so I can get a good fold. We can go ahead and fold it, and I'm actually going to use my um, score tool to help me fold it and get it nice and square just by pushing it into those corners and it helps because acetate can be a little bit wiggly. And then I'm gonna fold this down so crisp. Got the first time folded. I don't need my scoreboard now. I'll put it away real quick. And now I'm gonna score it again. I want this really crisply scored. Basically, this piece is just gonna be something to hold up our card element, which is gonna be real pretty, but we need it to be able to fold good, to stand up. Okay. So then we can lay it back down, but not it's not gonna lay perfectly flat because it is acetate. It's not like paper, okay? But that's the beginning. So we've done that part and we've done this part. Let's go ahead and fold this down and crease it as well. Now what we're gonna do is attach this piece to our card base that we created, which will give us basically an A2 size card with a card stop backing and an acetate front. And the way I like to do that is with a little bit of sticky tape. So I'm gonna run some sticky tape down just like this. By the way, any supplies that I have in my store, I'll put in the link below so you'll be able to find those. So then I'm gonna remove the backer from the sticky tape. And I'm going to lay this guy in here. What I'm gonna do is line the bottom up, the bottom of the card, press that crease down, and then I'm gonna lift this fold and just bring it in and pick up the acetate. For me, that's the easiest way to make sure I get a nice uh, square card fold is by doing it that way. Now, much like any other easel card, all we have to do now is create something pretty for the front and something to stop here. But the cool thing is we're gonna lift it with acetate so it'll look like it's floating. Let me show you my idea. I'm gonna use this Spellbinders Nestability die set that I have. These are the, the classic scallop circles large, and I'm gonna be using the second largest and then the one underneath it to make um, the little portion that's gonna pop up on the card. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut out several of these. I've got some white paper here, and I'm gonna cut the largest circle out of the white paper. I think that will be really pretty to kind of pop when the, when the element is standing up off of the easel card. So this is a B plate, so I'm using my A, C, and B plate to cut. Just, and that gives me this shape, which is perfect. Now, now I'm gonna cut one more, and it's the pink color. And I'm going to, oop, I guess I need the paper first. Here's the pink. Put my little scallop circle on there, and run it through. While I have the die cut machine out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this circle die. It's just a straight circle die, and this is what we're gonna use to hide the adhesive on the back of the easel card. It'll make more sense when we get to it, but I wanted to go ahead and cut it while we were here so you would know that you would need this piece as well. I'm gonna be using this stamp set from my stamp line called Just To Say Thanks. I love this stamp set. I think it's perfect for a card like this because when you give someone a card, especially a thank you card, it's nice if they can have it on their desk to look at it for the future and things like that. I think that will be really nice. So this is a thank you card. So I'm gonna start with a sentiment that says thank you and some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I'm gonna ink it up. 
and I'm going to stamp thank you at the top because I'm going to put some other words underneath it. So thank you goes there. I love that saying. This is how I clean my stamps. I just take them straight to a little travel pack of handy wipes or baby wipes and just wipe them off just like that. See how my stamps are not lined up on my sheet? Sometimes that bothers people and sometimes it doesn't. I wanna give you a tip today. If you'll lay your stamp down when you're through with it on your work surface and then take the acetate to the stamp and line it up on top of where the wording is, hard to do from an angle, but when you can get over the top, you get a much neater replacement of your stamp. That may not matter for anybody, but I love that. That's what I've started to do. So over time, these will all be back where they go, but for now, they're a mess. Now I've taken the bar and polka dot um, image from that same stamp set, and I'm just gonna stamp it right underneath the thank you. You can use this with the line down or the line up, that's totally up to you. And the last sentiment I'm gonna stamp is for being there. I just think if someone was there for you and you give them a thank you card that is an easel card that can stand up for them to be able to see this, every time they look at the card, they're reminded how thankful you are that they were there for you. So there is the sentiment all stamped. Now to the fun part, the assembly of the pieces. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna glue, or I'm gonna glue this piece straight down onto this white piece that is the backer. And I'm just gonna do that with some art glitter glue. So no foam here, I'm just gluing it straight down. And I'm gonna line those scallops up and try to get it the same distance away all the way around. I think that looks really pretty. And now I wanna pop this up on some foam on the center portion here to give it a little more dimension. So I've applied some foam tape to the back and now I'm just gonna center this and line those scallops up as best I can again. Just like that. I love how that looks. Isn't that pretty nice and bright and bold? Now then we're gonna to come to our acetate. We're gonna apply this piece only to the folded portion of our acetate, okay? You do not wanna seal it all the way down. When you lift an acetate card, like I'm gonna put this here just temporarily. When you lift an easel card, you don't want the back half or the top half to be adhered down so that it can lift. If we were to adhere it down, it wouldn't lift. So we're only gonna apply adhesive to the bottom half of this, and I'm using sticky tape for this. Now you do wanna make sure you get it in the right place, so pay attention to the front there. Gonna put some sticky tape in this area. And a little further down. And maybe one more piece right there. So now we're just gonna adhere this down onto our little easel card, making sure that our adhesive does not stick out over that half of the card where we scored the acetate. So this way, when we stand this up, you see what we get? We get a stand card. Awesome. So we have this piece adhered to the top, but when we flip this over, you can see the ugly adhesive in the back. Now, you could have cut a scallop circle just like this one to put behind it, but my issue with that is, then you have to pay attention to how you're stamping and how you're placing this on because it's scalloped. Instead, I did a circle that I'm gonna lay here, but I'm gonna cut in half to cover my adhesive. So what I'm gonna do is make a little mark with a pencil this is just kind of a cheater way. I don't want to spend too much time on this piece since it's really just to hide my adhesive. So I'm just making a mark where that score line is, that fold line is, and I can use my paper trimmer to cut it straight. So just line those pencil marks up on the cutter. And now you have what you need to cover that up. Again, you could totally just use the scallop but I find, matter of fact, let me show you from trial and error. I did this scallop and I cut it in half. Well, when I started playing and doing and putting everything together, when I tried to lay it down, see how it doesn't match up? Well, that's not what we're looking for. We want it to match up. So that's why I thought, you know what? If I did a circle, I don't have to worry about it matching up. I can just put it on the back and hide my adhesive. So that's what we're gonna do, just a little half circle. So I'm gonna add some sticky tape to it as well. And this, of course, we don't have to hide because it's gonna be the hider. <laughs> So now we're gonna place this on the back so that it hides our adhesive, but it also clears the fold of the easel card so that it can still fold. So see, it looks a lot cleaner and neater. You don't see all that adhesive everywhere. All right, so back to the front. 
Now we need something that's going to block it so it will stand up when the person gets the card. So something in this area. You can use a sentiment there. You can do a ribbon banner. You can do all kinds of things. I'm going to do some flowers. To show you what I've done here, I've used some of my new favorite punches. These flower punches from Martha Stewart as well as that butterfly punch. And I punched multiple times out of different colors. You see I've punched some of the big, some of the butterfly out of pink and then some of the big flowers out of white, some of them out of pink and vice versa. Then I've taken these flowers and I've layered them on top of each other. So see how it's like three layers? That makes them dimensional so I can use them in the card to hold it up. Now I also want to put some centers in. I think those would be pretty to add these little pearls to. So I have these sticky back pearls that I'm going to add. I'm just going to stick them in the middles. And these pearls are not perfectly white, but I still think they'll be pretty in there. I think pearls are very classy. So there's those flowers ready to go. Now for these guys, I may or may not use them. I didn't need them for the stacking, so I'm going to move them out of the way and we might decide to use them. I am going to use this butterfly, however, and I think I'm going to add a pearl to it also. Just right to the center to kind of dress it up a little bit. Just like that. Now let's bring the card back over. So as I went to put the flowers on, I noticed that they just kind of blend in. See how that doesn't pop? I decided to put a third color in. So I'm going to add craft because pink and white and craft is one of my favorites. But this is a little bit flat. This piece is four inches wide by five and a quarter tall. And I want this edge to be a little fancier. So I'm going to use a border punch and just fancy it up a little bit. So now I'm just going to adhere this down into the card to give it a little bit of contrast. Now we can decide where we want our flowers to go to hold this in place. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of foam tape on the back of those just for extra height. So I've added that foam tape to the back and I'm just removing that backer. And now holding the card in place where I want that to stand, I'm going to put the first flower in place as the brace. So there's the first one. And I'm going to kind of cluster these onto one side close together. So they will hold over there. I think that's super cute to have that little cluster of flowers. And then I'm going to add a flower to our sentiment piece. Let me bring this down. I'm going to add a flower here too. I think that will be really pretty there. But I'm just going to use regular glue for that. I'm not going to pop that up on foam tape. And now for the butterfly. I think the butterfly will be so pretty kind of flying off the card here in the corner. I'm going to add some adhesive to that and add it to the corner. I'm going to use my tweezers to help me out with this one. So I made myself a few more flowers because I think it'll be pretty to kind of add some here as well. You can see one of them is laying there because I was testing it to see if I liked it. Now, just because the card was feeling a little bit flat to me, I pulled out my leaf punch. I think this is the large branch punch from Martha Stewart. Did some green leaves. I'm going to add them in just to give us another layer. I love punches. You can just play and have a good time. I think they're really cool. The only thing you want to be sure of is when you're putting your leaves in, you want to make sure they don't hang out over the base of your card so it'll still fit into an envelope. So there you go, guys. That is your acetate easel card. I love this card. I think it is so neat how that element just floats at the top. And I have to give props to Pinterest because I was on Pinterest looking at these and that's how they got me. I was like, oh, I have to try this card. So there you go. What a perfect card to give to someone you want to say thank you to. Or any sentiment could fit in there. Happy birthday. Anything can go in there. If you recreate one of these cards, we want to see it over on my Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I. Take a picture of your project and share it with us. If you hashtag it with the hashtag Spring Fling, you can be entered into our giveaway that's open through the end of the month. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.